So, we're on to mission three. Redirection. Join the carrier fleet embarking on a preemptive naval strike. What's the briefing? Our engineers were able to salvage the navigation computers from the drone ships and use them to determine the location of the main naval fleet of the enemy. We have tasked an aircraft carrier fleet to intercept before they get too close to the island. In order to maximise their force, you and the other pilots are ordered to join the fleet. A pilot belonging to the carrier was out on combat air patrol, so that's one air to air. When his navigation systems experience failure, the pilot has is lost and low on fuel. You must quickly find him and lead him to the fuel tanker on the way to the carrier. So this mission is actually fairly simple. The most complicated bit is you land on a boat at the end. Right, let's get ready to be interrupted. Hmm, plane started on. That's nice. One of the pilots out on camp stopped responding to comms and seems to have lost the way back. Before heading to the carrier, rendezvous with the pilot and see if they need assistance. Your objective waypoint is his last known location. Command out. Landing gear. Landing gear. Drop the miser so I can see my thing. Cool. So yeah, this one we're literally just taking off. Gonna go look for a dude, find the dude, watch him refuel, and then go land in an aircraft carrier. Fairly simple mission. I'm gonna be lazy, hit nav, let the plane fly to the marker. I would say though, if this is like you're playing the campaign for the first time, do all the flying yourself. Um, I've probably got about 50 hours flying in this game, which will surprise you considering how shit I am. But, yeah, don't don't use the autopilot to begin with too much. Obviously, use it when you're prepping your weapon systems or fiddling around with the TGP. I even still use it when I'm using the head-mounted TGP because it means I can, you know, properly look around and worry that my little movements on the joystick aren't going to crash the plane. Um, but generally, if you're just flying about, I'd stick to doing it yourself to begin with. Let's start afterburner, um, just because it gives you a better better feel for the planes and you get used to them get better at flying them it's just all round a good idea ah, so we're meant to be looking for a lost jet um, the blue friendly plane on the map is the fuel tanker so I should be able to see that yep yeah, it's that black dot over there I zoom in it's just about to go behind my minigun no. oh, yeah, she's back that's the refueling plane there she is. But we're looking for a jet. Um, so yeah, it's just around here somewhere. You kind of just have to find it. And then fly near it. And then it will follow you to the air refueler. I like the fact you can see the ammo, the 30mm 30 30 ammo for the gun down there. So that's another thing that messes with your mind. If I put this back on my head and turn around, those barrels, that's what's on the front of that gun. Obviously the camera is on the nose of this plane, so when the camera looks to its right, it's at the same height as that gun down there. But yeah, it gets a bit trippy, but it's just, you get used to it. But yeah, when you're coming into land, what you see on this little heads up display, if you're using it to see through the ground when you're doing a VTOL, is going to appear closer to the ground and obviously... Autopilot, oh, autopilot was going to start doing rings around in circles. Uh, I'm going to stick this on forward, Let's put, put the autopilot to maintain altitude but I'm going to keep a really steep angle so the plane is just going to rotate on its own. Alright, there's my jet, that little black dot. I'll lock it on the TGP just for the giggles. So gimbal limit means the camera can't turn to where you're trying to make it look because it's physically reached its limit that it can turn. Ah, oh, I missed. If you, um, so I press and held the joystick then on my right hand to get the um, camera back on my head. And then, yeah, when you push the stick in, if you're looking close enough to something, it will lock on. But apparently I'm rubbish and can't do it, so let's just guide it to it manually. There we go. Anyway, I was just doing that. You don't need to do this, but there he is. There's the jet we're chasing down. Hey, this is Romeo 1-2. I'm glad you found me. I had a multiple systems failure, but was able to get my backup short-range comms working. I'm firmly up on you, but I'm low on fuel, so lead the way to the tanker. 
Oops, now we just have to guide him to the tanker that we've already seen is over here. There it is. Lock onto it, because why not? Visual on tanker. Give me a minute to top her off. So now we just get to watch this jet. Refuel. This is going to take an annoyingly long time. Over G. Over G. So, over G, over G. The computer is telling me that the input I'm giving to the stick is beyond the safe operating limits of the aircraft. So she's saying over G. So I'm not exceeding those limits. The computer is artificially hampering me, uh, like limiting, stopping me from exceeding. If I want to exceed them, you flick this G limit switch here. See, toggle G limiter. Turn that off. And then rather than computer says no, computer says yes. But not too much in this plane, but the faster jets, you can literally rip the wings off um, and just explode and die. So there is a reason the G limit exists, but there is kind of a fine line between what the computer says is safe and what really is safe. So by turning the G limiter off, you can actually do some cheeky maneuvers and dodge missiles. So I'm being a right dick, because I'm literally just slowly flying behind this refueling plane, which is exactly what my AI friend, who needs to refuel, wants to do. Uh, there he is. Bloody hell, he's coming in hot, isn't he? See the little air brake sticking up on the back of his plane? Beautiful. But yeah, let's, um, let's just watch him on here. Stick it back on colour, zoom in. Look at him, his sphincter's contracting. So yeah, he's going to have to get nice and close under the refueling jet and then it's dropping its little refuely nozzle and he's sucking up the goodies. So there's lights. We can't see everything here. Let's see if I drop down. There's lights on the underneath of the refueling jet that let you know if you're too far forwards or back or high or low. I'm sure he's just doing it perfectly right now and they're all green because he's a show off. Oh no, he's got some on the ambers and greens. See him under there, flashing? So that's how you have a visual aid to help you with refueling. But refueling's hard. AI is just showing off doing it so well. Um, it's just flexing on us. But I like it how the AI, you can see the nozzles on the jet engines constantly adjusting and the air brake constantly coming up. So the AI does actually do all the inputs that you would need to do as a real pilot to fly the plane, which is pretty sweet. And it's refueling's really hard. If I, I'm actually probably going to crash into this plane. Right, let's get a bit further away from it. So now we just need to go land on some boats down there. So let's stick the old camera on my head, pull back on the thumbstick on my right hand to zoom out. Now I'm going to push the thumbstick up. Look, that's where we're going. I'm going to land on that one. Uh, nice. So obviously this is going to need to be a vertical landing. I always find getting rid of height takes ages, so getting rid of it the quick way, cut throttle, use the air brakes, we're going to have quite a lot of speed to bleed off. Nicely, nicely. Alright, dude, let's just coast in for a bit. So let's talk about some other stuff. Obviously I've got my speed in knots. G. That's how many G's the pilot, me, is currently feeling. So I'm feeling 1G because I am on Earth and there is a gravity of 1G. Um, obviously I pull the stick up, I experience positive G, I feel heavier, I'm going to black out. And if I go down you uh, see some negative G. No worries mate. Off you go. Altitude. Yeah, it's fine. Shush. Altitude. You're in the queue for an arrested landing, or you can take a vertical landing on one of the elevators. Your call. I'm going for a vertical landing. She needs to get a bit closer, to be fair. So under G, we've got an M. That's our current speed, but as in Mach. So Mach 1, speed of sound. Um, I can't remember what it is in knots. Is it 460 or 560? 590? Don't know. We'll figure it out. And then the little fish, that's um, our like alpha angle of attack. So that's the difference in degrees from where my nose is pointing, which is that funny W with wings, and the way we are going, which is that little circle with wings. So that angle difference is um, currently 12 degrees. Uh, I'm going to stick this back on my head so I can see through the floor. 
I'm massively overshooting, so I'm going to nose up and full throttle to push myself backwards. And I'm just going to kind of get to level flight now because the boat, yeah, the boat is going um, forwards, obviously, so it's flying away from me. Wow, I'm doing a bad job of this. So, you know what I said about the camera. So look at the back of that boat. You can see that number 12. It's fine. If I put this camera on it, everything looks blurry. And that's because I'm currently seeing what my eyes see, if they are, and what the camera sees. And like I said, the camera is down there by my toes. So you're actually seeing two different perspectives at once. So it gets a bit trippy. Um, but that's why it looks like we're seeing double currently. So if I do that, we're seeing one. If I do that, we're seeing double. See the other circle, there's like two of them. But um yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna crash into the back of this boat. Clap. Ah. Clap. Clap. I didn't put the landing gear down. Clap. Let's do a little push up. Hmm. Not recommended. Highly effective. 